blessing from last week. We was in season four, episode seven. So I'm going to bring up my sheet and hopefully it comes up. I see there's a little problem. What? It came up. Thank you. I'm so glad. I don't want to have any internet problems on today. So this is from last week. Um, again, episode number seven, which came from the passage uh, from John chapter eight, verse 48, um, nine through uh, chapter nine, one through 12. Notable themes. And John, uh, we still have this continue insults towards Yeshua. Then we also have Yeshua still doing discipleship. He's still teaching the disciples and making more disciples. People begin to believe on him. He is the light of the world. He's teaching them that he's the light of the world. And then we have Jehovah's power that is shown. All the cross reference. I want to address the cross reference from John chapter 5, verse 1 through 8. We had talked about um, this man being born blind, which was from John chapter 8. But John chapter 5, we have the blind, the lame, and all of them being healed. And there is a pool, Bethsaida, inside John chapter 8. There's another pool. Uh, I think it's called Salam, Salama, Salam. So those was the comparison about the pool, but the man that was lame is the one that took up his mat and walked. I wanted to clarify that because I think I misspoken last week. Now, I have my word study. My word study is death. This is the final death that they will see when he said, um, you will not taste death. And this is the death that you will not taste when you're following the Messiah. Now, the Messiah... In John chapter 8, he had a discussion about he had to get things done um, be, before the darkness, before the darkness come. I'm going to read that to you. John chapter 9, verses 4 through 5. We must carry out the works of him who sent me as long as it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. While I'm in the world, I am the light of the world. So Yeshua is speaking about this darkness. Now, for me, when he was speaking about this darkness, two passages came in mind. One from when he dies, and then in Revelation, when they're thrown into the, into the outer darkness. So those two areas came to me. But I want to focus on today on the passage and Luke 23, verses 44 through 45, because that darkness, no one worked. So it says, it was now about the sixth hour and darkness came over all the land until the ninth hour. The sun was darkened. Now we know this is going to happen again, but the sun was darkened and the veil of the temple was torn down the middle. So there was no work being done because what? Where are the disciples at this time? They're hiding. Where are the disciples and what are they doing up to the third day that he rises from the dead? They're not doing the work of the kingdom. They're actually, some went back to what they was doing and fishing and then, you know, some were hiding. So most definitely, this is what was going on in my mind when I read about that. Now, Yeshua is focused on what is important, the essentials. What is important? Because they're claiming and comparing him as being a demon and someone from Samaria living in sin. This is because people begin to believe in him. But we know that a demon would never reverence the father. By following Yeshua's teachings, you are showing respect to the Father because Yeshua's teachings come from the Father. That same Yeshua who they can't find sin in, remember he said, point out the sin, he teaches the Torah. But they target him. He is targeted not for teaching incorrectly, according to Yehovah, but from teaching different from their traditions. Yeshua then drops a bomb on them. I love this. He said, Abraham saw his day and rejoiced. 
And they're like, hey, you're not even 50 years old. How do you know Abraham? You, you couldn't have been before Abraham. But when he said, I am, oh, they wanted to stone him to death. Matter of fact, they grabbed stones and he got away. They were going to murder him. Yeshua understands Jehovah's ways and perceives the will of the Father. And the will of the Father will be revealed through this blind man. He Yeshua knew and understood this. This is why he said this was not caused by any sin. He was born blind, but now this man sees. Now, the thing that I noticed last week is that he's back in the same place because the neighbors, the people looking like, isn't that the same man? Isn't, isn't that the man that was begging? Isn't that the same man? And he said, he kept saying, yeah, I, I'm the man. I'm the one. Yes, that's me. But not once did we hear at this time, but this man is testifying that Yeshua healed him. Not once did we hear this man going yelling that I was blind, now I see. Not once did we hear any of this. He wasn't testifying about anything. But his very presence of being in that spot again is a testimony. And this is what we're going to get into today. So my application, I will continue. This is what I continue. Examine a teacher who's teaching because I have to determine if they're teaching from tradition or they're teaching from the written word. And that can be very difficult to discern if you do not have the foundation of the Tanakh, the Old Testament. So it's difficult to discern. Okay. I continue to study the whole word, not part, not half, but the whole word. And I would do my best to walk in the word. This is a lifestyle. Following and being a disciple of Yeshua. How do you be, a, what does it mean to be a disciple of Yeshua? That means it's a whole lifestyle change. It's a whole renewing of the mind. It's being born again by the washing of the water of the word. The word renews your mind. You know, all of this. So who are we following will always remain as a question on our journey. 